Oh, the what? You mean the rower? Right here. One over there. Which oh, the is, rower. Yeah. Sorry, so that's my Australian accent. Sorry. <laughs> w uh, rower. Oh. We started to install the show from this point moving forward, so we had more room to hang. Oh, it was no, just sorry. a matter of logistics on how much no, space we put. Oh, that's what I mean is there's, there's an image and then lots of space around. If you, okay, so okay. okay. If, if you if you know my work over the last XX years, you find that I've had things like that, and it's it's actually. But taking a painting, uh, I, it's an image from a painting. And it's not that, uh, if you know the work, it, it sort of fits in. You know? uh, I, I uh, would say that uh, a lot of artists work inside of a style and the work is contained. And my work spreads all over the place. So you see a lot of things that are different. No, no, no. I don't think of it as a one more space than any other. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think of it as a criticism. Thank you. <laughs> Jack. Yeah. Is is the black and white work we're seeing all recent, or have you pulled black and white from your collection as well? Yeah, this goes way back. If you look at the dates, it goes way back. The black and white stuff. Uh, Has this sort of collection been displayed before? No, this is the first time. It's fantastic. Yeah, the first time we've done because we've done more and more, and uh, we're, we're anchoring with those great big ones that uh, big silk screens, the big figures, uh, and they couldn't have a. a a, a, a bed large enough to print them. So they had them on a roll, the paper, and they put it on the table, they printed it, and then they rolled the paper and printed the other. Could you describe the process of getting to that, those prints? Well, the, the process was that uh, uh, Barney's approached me to, uh, to do a, a, a window for them. And I thought it was a great idea, and then they showed me this thing that Roy Lichtenstein did, which was a six-foot Frisbee and the window he did, and I thought it was fantastic. And I said, well, you gotta come over it. And so my, my idea was to cover the windows completely, take away the display space, and put the stuff on the front. And they went along with it, which I was surprised at. So they had no display space, all this ex very expensive display space was displaced by these. And then they said, we, we have a, a problem uh, with lighting it, and so uh, we we got we came up with a solution. We had enough experience to make it into a scrim, and with the scrim you could light it from the back like theater. So at night the thing was pretty wild. On Ma it's on Madison Avenue, and it was back lit, which it didn't look like a print at all. And that's the story. The the uh, uh, People on it were people who were, who were handling it, the um, art production fund women. And I, they came in, they were all very, very uh, stylish dresses, so I just had them pose and made little sketches direct, and we blew them up. And that, that's, how, that's, that's the story on that. Mm -hmm. And I saw in some of your interviews where you said you weren't accepted by the, the realist painters and you weren't accepted by the abstract artists. <laughs> Could you speak to the movement of what is photorealism and your perspective on it? Yeah, yeah. But, but, no, what it was originally, the original work in the 50s uh, was not accepted by realistic painting. It was just too open. And it wasn't accepted by the abstract painting because it was figurative. When the uh, photo realist and pop art came, when I when I showed in in Europe, it, they, I was they didn't know whether I was a bad pop artist or a bad photo realist. <laughs> are these portraits of real people, or are they anonymous 
They're real people. What I mean, of course, is that he took up portrait of this particular person trying to bring out the qualities or... No, just trying, to, uh, just trying to paint what they look like. Oh, um, women sell better than men. <laughs> you work from photographs? Huh? You work? You use photographs? Not too often, but but uh, I've 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 I've. I've uh, originally, I, I used photographs when they were considered evil in the 50s. And uh, I would, would go through a bunch of other people's photos, and I found something was nostalgic. I would paint it in a, kind of a very rough way. And then I, I used photos in the 60s and 70s as images, and I would get a nice photo image and then pose people in it, because I was painting perceptually. And then... <coughs> I guess about 10 years ago, I started noticing that uh, we'd go to the beach every afternoon and have coffee and you'd look at the people there and you'd say, well, they're gestures that are never repeated again, you know? Most, if you have a person standing in front of you, they'll always come back to repeat gestures they've had before. And so I said, well, I spoke to my daughter-in-law as a photographer and said, get me a camera that a 14-year-old can use. So she got me a camera that a 14-year-old could use, and I started taking photos. And I took photos, and I stopped putting them together, and, it, and after about two or three years, I got one that was really good. And then the next year, it was boring. And that was the end of it, so I didn't do anything. And then about two years ago, three years ago, uh, I got an iPhone, and I found that if I make sketches, I could make about eight, and I get bored. With an iPhone, I can make 45 sketches of gestures. And so I start using the iPhone and then make about 40 gestures, lay them on the floor, and arrange six of them and put them together. And that's uh, given me a, a lot more. And I don't know where I am now <laughs> with, in relationship to photos. Well, I generally work seven days a week, and um, uh, you have to adjust the work routine to your temperament. And when I was young, I, tr I thought it, well, let's do it like a job. And so I clocked in at nine, and I painted to about four or five, and I did about three months, and the paintings were all destroyed. <laughs> they were terrible paintings, and I couldn't paint that way. And I found, uh, as I went on, uh, well, I, uh, when I went to start to paint landscape after first start school, uh, I was connected and I could paint very good if I painted fast. So I could work that way. So that's, that determined the way I work. Now you can't do the same thing every day. Then I got into wanting to paint large paintings, so then I had to change the way I worked. And so the way I work now is I make quick sketches and then develop them. So every day I do something more or less different. You know? And it works out okay. Um, who are your influences? They, oh, the, the myriad. The influences are just myriad. I don't know whether it's embarrassing or not. <laughs> we go through the whole art book. I took something from everybody and anyone around. <laughs> And we'll, billboards, movies, newspapers, fashion the magazines, artists. artists, everything. Yeah, yeah. The, you can you can ask me a, a person. I'll say, oh yeah, I did that from him. <laughs> to follow up on her question, who is the greatest living artist in your opinion beside you? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> next question. Next question. <laughs> in his opinion, who is the greatest living artist beside him? <laughs> We let that go. Do you have any artists that you look? Yeah, I'm not here to talk about other artists. No, no. <laughs> Hello? I'm curious. I'm curious about what paper do you print? What ink do you use? Does anybody help you print? 
Newark Prince. Oh yeah, I don't do. Yeah. See, this kind of this. The, most of the Newark, Newark Prince of the last forty years are done by, by really good printers, and uh, so I work with great printers, and uh, they fool around. They bring me samples, and we figure out the paper. But basically, the inks and stuff, they they decide. Yeah. I just say yes and no. We find I found in. in uh, Litho's arches is, arches is better for color than reeves. So as an art student, um, coming in, I, I remember taking a bus into uh, New York from Philadelphia. And I was studying portrait painting at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. So you were definitely like one of our heroes. and. Um, and we rode in, and then there you were. You were walking in your neighborhood, just very casually, with a um, stargazer lily. And you were just like walking with this lily, like some kind of Renaissance painting. Or something. <laughs> it was like you were in your own painting. Like the way that you carved the figures out of blackness, it, that's the, how you were. And it was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And, and, like, and we were there to like really, because we were like teenagers, and we were like, oh my god. Oh my god. In his own painting. Right? <laughs> what I wanted to ask you really was like, uh, maybe kind of what kind of preparations are like, do you just see things carved out like, in a way, they're sort of sculptural. Um, like, what kind of preparations do you make to, how do you train yourself to be able to see things so, I, I don't want to say graphically because it, it's sort of graphically, but so sculptural. So, well, well, two, two things. So, so concisely. Two things. One thing, in, one thing in, in my head, <clears throat> when I'm out on the street, I'm still uh, the person that very few people like. <laughs> when I was 19, when I was early 20s. Oh, in, in my head when I'm out on the street, I'm still the person that no one really liked in the 50s. <laughs> and uh, as, as far as uh, uh, things, how I get to the images, it's all instinct. It goes quicker than I can think. I just look at something and say, wow, that's a painting. Let's go for it. Or I see something that uh, other people do, and I said, well, I'd like to do the opposite, something like that. You have all different ways of getting at things. But uh, most of it is instinctive. You know? And the thing is, like, uh, the, the thing was to, uh, no matter what people say, uh, if your instincts are strong enough, you just follow them. And that's what I did. That's, that's the way I went. I just followed my instinct. And what I was making, uh, 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 the, the original art, at the time where I was doing it, was a very stupid move. <laughs> I mean, it had no negotiability whatsoever. Maybe uh, just uh, one more question. No, it, it's a, it, 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 I was asked, they, they say, oh, you're a great colorist. And I said, uh, I'm not interested in color, I'm interested in light. And so the color, is, the color is a vehicle for making light. And so the black and white is a vehicle for making light. So it's all about light, it's not about color. That's beautiful. Thank you so much.